Right, today I'm at Park House Stables near Newbury with Maddie O'Meara and Jason Watson. Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us today. No problem. Um, can you just pl uh, please both introduce yourselves, Maddie, first? I am Maddie O'Mara and I am the head girl at Park House Stables for Andrew Golding. And uh, Jason? I'm Jason Watson and I'm a professional jockey and uh, just got a job with Roger Charlton. Okay, can you t can you tell me how long you've um, both been involved? We're at the uh, Andrew Bowling Yard at the moment. Can you tell me how long you've been invo involved with this yard? I have been in Andrew's yard for five years, um, but I, d I did take a year out to go to Australia. And um, I was been here about three years now, uh, and I took out my license two years ago. Okay, Jason, you um, you're a graduate of the King's School Finishing School. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, finishing my apprenticeship with Andrew Balding, um, it just, well, I kind of finished it midway through the season and uh, obviously went straight into being a professional jockey. Uh, the transaction through um, was very, you know, I didn't really notice it to be honest and I was having such a great year, um, it just didn't seem to stop the way things went and I still kept riding. Um, it's all the right trains. Okay, Maddie, you're head girl here. What what does that job entail? And could you describe a typical day for us? Well, as if if there is a typical day. Yeah, a typical day is waking up at about half four in the morning to go and feed my barn of twenty seven, um, and then I'll come back in and probably fall asleep on the sofa and then start again at half six, um, riding four lots in between. Uh, running up and down from the barn to leg people up, put bandages on um, and then we have a short break from like half twelve till half three where I'll go back and uh, check around the horses to make sure their legs and everything else is in good order and they're looking well and then uh, anything that needs to be done medical wise or anything, get that done and then feed up for the night, put them to bed. Is it ever in vogue going racing? No, it doesn't, I uh, stay on the yard. Jason, you had a meteoric rise to fame in 2018. Uh, the easiest winner of the Prentice title since Paul Hannigan in 2002 with 110 winners, including a, a group race. Um, what do you attribute that success to? Um, I, well, I can't just pinpoint it on, on one thing, but I'd say, obviously, my agent, uh, I made the switch to Mr. Hines, who does the likes of Ryan Moore and Andrea Zini and uh, Jim Crowley. Um, I made the move to him just after I lost my seven pound claim, but uh, also I've got obviously I've got Mr. Balding to thank for giving me, giving me the chance to even get my license out, and uh, John Reed as well, my jockey coach, he's always been a great help to me. So how does it work when you're an apprentice? Do you, do you get paid for rides and do you get prize money still, or do you just get a set wage and you just learn your craft? No, you 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 do get paid. Um, depends kind of who you're with. Uh, to be honest, who you assign yourself to as apprentice. Um, I'm with Mr. Balding. What happens is he takes half of your riding fees and your winnings. Um, but in order for him to do that, he has to give you a certain amount of rides in the air. And um, to be honest, I find that's I think it's the way to go forward. Um, you know, if you're if you're getting the some of your earnings taken away from you, then you do need the extra support. Um, but I think that encourages trainers to give apprentices more of a chance. Okay, now I understand you're both a couple. Is working in the horse racing industry a help or a hindrance to life as a, as a couple together? I think because we both are in the industry, it works quite well because we both understand what we're doing. Um, to be honest, I think it works quite well. Yeah. Because yeah. I understand he's a jockey, so he's away racing. He knows I'm up early doing my job as well, so it works. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I think that's important that we both understand that our lifestyles and they're very busy lifestyles. But you know, obviously, you have your little flickers, but that's, that's the way it is, isn't it? <laughs> um, what what drew you both to horse racing in the first place? Uh, I qu I've been riding my whole life, but I quite like to go fast and I like my hunting and stuff like that, and I wanted to always work with the horses, and it was the only real proper horse industry that you have a set wage and you get looked after and um, I've loved it and I've gone point to pointing with my own since and 
when you look back. Yeah, Jason, what drew you to it? Uh, my parents got me involved. Um, they used to learn down a riding school down back in Brighton where I'm from. And uh, the instructor was a ex-jockey and he taught me to ride as well. And he just kind of said to me, hinted to me and my parents that I might be good enough to be a jockey one day. So that's kind of where it took off. Okay, now you had a tre tremendous 2018, like we said, winning the group race, the Stewards Cup, and then you got the plum job of Roger Charlton, quoted as short sure was 10 to 1 to be champion jockey. And on the 4th of January, racing showed how it can bring people down. You tell us about the fall at Kempton. Um, yeah, look, it was a four runner race. Um, you don't expect anything to happen in a field that small, but uh, my horse just seemed to stumble not long after we had started the race and I, we both went down and hit the floor hard and uh, yeah I suffered three f fractures in my neck and uh, one in my back, my T7 um, and yeah I was rushed to the hospital straight away. Okay so Maddie, how do you hear about it in the first of all? I heard about it like 10 minutes after it happened. I um. It was a bit of bad luck. I had a friend that had just arrived from Ireland. We were having a cup of tea, and uh, the assistant trainer um, waved at us through my um, the doors, and he said, "Jason's had a fall, but he's um, on his knees, so he looked to be all right through the screen." Um, and then he rang me what twenty minutes after, yeah, yeah. and um, I just jumped straight in the car and went to the hospital. Now, Jason, not many people can expect to get an injury like yours at work. Are the um, is the financial support? And there for a jockey when you've had a bad fall and you're off. Yeah, uh, look, there's been so much work being done over the last couple of decades with uh, the support that jockeys get during accidents, and um, I think the jockey club is at a really good stage now, and uh, I get, you know, paid what I would be earning if I was riding still. And what they do is they base it on how much of a good season you had the year before, as so how much they're gonna. And be paying you, or you know how much, how well you were doing before you had your in incident. Um, so, you know, I'm very lucky that they were on the balls to me straight away the next day. Um, Price, uh, who deal with all the financial um, side of things, contacted me the next day and was on to it straight away. Okay, it's lucky you had a good season there. <laughs> yeah. <as> well. yeah. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of talk recently about the staffing problem in horse racing. What's both your take on it? I think it's one of those things that goes up and down. I mean, we've seen it here on the yard. We'll have seasons where we are struggling for staff and then seasons where we're full staffed and flying. Um, I mean, you could, it could be advertised further afield than just already in the horse racing world I think that would be a really big help because there's so many young people that are in love with horses and everything but don't necessarily really think that horse racing is a job that they can do. Okay so do you think that you say people love horse racing is it fair for the industry to see stable staff as making a lifestyle choice when it comes to giving them poor holiday and working hours compared to in inverted commas normal jobs? Uh, 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 to be honest, look, it's uh, you just mentioned that you don't get great holidays, and I mean it depends on who you work for, so to, to what your wages are like. Um, but you got to have a real love, I think, for for the animals and and the industry, and it is a lifestyle. It's more than just a job. So I think that's kind of why the industry struggles to get the staff. Um, but I think we just need a lot more media work being done and you know, really need to get it in the public eye. Okay, now there must be a lot of young people, I mean, you're both relatively young as well, that have come to work in yards, possibly their first job, some away from home for the first time. I mean, when I interviewed Luke Harvey, he said he cried for a week. Is there emotional support for young people that, yeah. that turn up? Yeah, um, I mean, this yard alone, we have um, a member of senior management that is in charge of, well there's two actually, that are in charge of anyone that if they're not feeling comfortable or something's happened or they're just sad, that they are um, there for them to go to and chat and it's totally between them. Um, I don't know if every yard has that, I mean I, I think they should, 
Um, because like you say, it's a big yard with lots of young people going through, growing up without their parents around them. Um, but this yard really does support that. Mm. No matter you're a head girl at the yard, have you, do you feel you've already reached as high as you can go? No, not at all. So I was going to say, so the lack of career prospects is something of a myth. Yeah, absolutely. Racing. I mean, if, you, if you've got your mind set on something that you want to do, and it's a, a job that you're going to have to work for and climb, you can absolutely do it. I mean, you just have to put in the hours and the work for it. But this yard will always um, give you more and more chances and opportunities um, if you want them. And they know, if you, they know you want them then the chances are you can get them. Okay, so what would, you, what would your own ultimate ambition be? Um, I would quite like to do a bit of the abroad travelling um, as head girl. Um, I'd love that. Um, or I would do an assistant trainer's job, but probably in a smaller yard. Um, but, you know, he would be a great stepping stone and he would always help find somewhere for you to start that. Um, so, yeah, see what happens, really. Okay, so you obviously you're both fully um, committed on your your careers at the moment. Jason looks like you know going right to the top as a jockey, but you probably not thought about sort of families and you know the sort of the future to that extent. Um, how would race being entrenched in racing, living, working in a yard affect your prospects of family life in the future? Would you, for example, you were in your flat now, would it be available to you if you needed? Uh, nine months off, you know, to look yeah, after a baby totally. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it would. So that that works yeah. the same as an yeah, other absolutely, industry. that's the same as any job. Yeah. Okay, now Jason, you're a young man at the very beginning of your career, and it would have a very bright future. But very few jockeys are going to continue much past their fifties, and that probably seems like a lifetime away, which it is. But is that is it something you think about, or are you just going to go for what you're doing now and do as well as you possibly can without yeah. worrying about that? Yeah, that's right. Um, like you say, it's a long way away, and I think if you're starting to think about that at this stage, you're kind of, you know, it's not great. Um, but I'm just gonna try and keep doing what I'm doing, and and uh, yeah, I mean, just got to keep going up from here. So about you, Maddie, is it a job for life? This is career of yours. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you could stay here forever. You could do this life forever. I mean, we've got so many people here that have been here for fifty years, mm. and they would never dream of doing anything else because they've absolutely loved it. Right. So is the racing lifestyle, both of you, something you recommend to people, of, you know, young people just leaving school or college or whatever? And does it restrict you to doing things that other 18-year-olds would enjoy doing? I would really recommend it. I've had the time of my life. I came here as a teenager and I've had so much fun. And it's like a... A second family, really. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd love it. Okay, so what if other people, if people watching this want to be, want to, you know, they've they've liked what they've heard. What is the best route you would suggest into racing? Um, I would say get yourself into the Great British Racing School, the Northern Racing College, and uh, they give you a tremendous amount of help, and they know your level of at what you're at and where's the best place for you to go um, you know the best yard for you to go at and if you're interested in being a, a jockey um, you know it's a lot a lot of it there's a lot of support out there but I think you've got to really push yourself because it's, it's not an easy life but you know if you have a good year like I have and you know your your career looks promising then you're going to in for a very nice life do you have to do you have to struggle already with weight, or are you lucky it's a natural? Um, I have done in the past uh, a few times, and um, yeah, look, it's never going to be easy, but you get yourself through it, and uh, I've got it all under control, and um, everything's very good. All right, so you obviously both love the lifestyle that you've chosen. Um, can you just sell it, Maddie, to somebody thinking about joining the racing game? People are looking for a staff sell it to somebody that's watching this okay than do it <laughs> absolutely do it i've had so much fun i've learned so much it's opened so many doors i went abroad i went to the other side of the world to do it and i loved it there as well you can travel the whole world 
getting paid to do a job that you love with the animals that you love and you make friends for life as well okay jason if it doesn't work out as a jockey would you be happy working in the yard as a yard man or uh, you know how is it for you if you if, if it doesn't work out for you passion is horses you know i i kind of it started this job through the love of horses and i've obviously done my fair share of, of uh, in the yard working and work around with the horses so you know definitely I, I, I would consider it and um, you know like I said I just I wouldn't be in it if I didn't love horses but of course everybody's going to be watching this in five years time and you're a champion jockey <laughs> <laughs> anyway Maddie and Jason thank you both very much thank Thanks you very much. much cheers